Welcome to Tusco Recaps. The movie we are about to see today is The Man from Toronto released in 2022. The movie opens with Teddy Jackson attempting to sell his fitness products, including a resistance band, sweatsuit, and non-contact boxing, but all of them fail. An assassin, known as The Man from Toronto arrives in the desert to question a suspect. He is well known for his extreme methods to extract information from the suspects. Toronto tells a story of how a grizzly bear skinned his grandfather and tells him he will do the same to the suspect. He then proceeds to take out the suspect's eyes with a hot knife, but the man becomes terrified and quickly gives up the information he seeks. Toronto returns home and begins preparing his breakfast when he is contacted by his handler. The handler informs him that the next deal he has lined up is for $2 million and he must leave for Onancock, Virginia, immediately. Even though Toronto only wants to relax, Toronto leaves for Virginia as the payment is big. Teddy is preparing to celebrate his wife Lori's birthday. Although Lori loves Teddy, she is aware of his reputation as a screw-up, to the point that her co-workers refer to an error as teddying things up. He sets up a romantic getaway by booking a cabin in Onancock, Virginia, but the address didn't get printed clearly because of the printer's low toner, which he forgot to replace. Teddy arrives at work and meets with his boss Marty, who is frustrated with Teddy because he printed flyers for their gym without an address or a phone number. While Marty likes Teddy, he is forced to fire him. Teddy, not wanting to ruin his wife's birthday, didn't inform her about him getting fired. Later, Teddy and Lori arrive at the spa where he is treating her for her birthday. He drops her off and then makes his way to the cabin. Teddy misreads the address because of the low toner situation and ends up where Toronto is supposed to meet his target at a cabin. The thugs in the house bring Teddy to the basement, under the impression that he is the man from Toronto. Teddy realizes he's in trouble and tries to calm their hostage. One of the thugs starts talking about the infamous reputation of Toronto and the man gets terrified and ends up giving the thugs a code number to activate a bomb. Moments later, a flash grenade is dropped into the basement, and FBI agents storm the house, apprehending all the men, including Teddy. Teddy is interrogated by two agents, who acknowledge that he is not the man from Toronto, but the agents require the man from Toronto to assist them in apprehending former Venezuelan Colonel Sebastian Marin. He tried to orchestrate a coup to overthrow the Venezuelan government the previous year, but U.S. intelligence prevented him. Marin and his wife Daniela managed to flee and are now plotting to assassinate the current president of Venezuela. Now, the FBI wants Teddy to keep pretending to be the man from Toronto to approach Marin and bring him down. Agent Santoro is given the responsibility of taking care of Lori while Teddy is at work, but Teddy feels threatened by Santoro due to his charm and good looks. Teddy hasn't told Lori about getting fired from the job. So, he informs her that he has to leave for Washington, D.C. immediately to do a presentation at a convention and his friend Santoro will accompany her. Santoro escorts her while she spends time with her friend Annie. The handler informs Toronto of the mix-up and provides him with Teddy's contact information. He discovers Teddy's fitness ads and cannot believe that this is the man who has been mistaken for him. He tracks Teddy down as the agents bring him to meet with Daniela. Instead of meeting Marin, Daniela has her men accompany Teddy to a hangar. As it turns out, the bomb has two codes and Teddy needs to get the second code from a guy named Mr. Green, who is in Puerto Rico attending a conference. At gunpoint, Toronto forces one of the FBI agents to follow them. Teddy finds himself on a plane bound for Puerto Rico with Daniela's men. Toronto infiltrates the plane in mid-flight and reveals himself as the man they were looking for though they continue to believe that Teddy is the true assassin. A fight ensues during which Teddy pulls a lever by mistake, opening the cargo door of the plane. He screwed up again. Toronto kills all of Martin's men, saves Teddy from falling off the plane, and prevents the plane from collapsing into the ocean. They land the plane in a field and start making their way out on foot after the plane explodes. The handler contacts Toronto and blames him for not killing Teddy because they do not leave any witnesses. She warns him not to screw up as he did once in Minnesota. Toronto tells Teddy that they must find Mr. Green and bring him to Marin because Marin has already seen Teddy's photo and believes he is Toronto. Another assassin, the man from Miami, arrives at a golf course to beat his target with a golf club. He receives a call from the handler, who offers him a contract to handle the mess with Toronto. Miami agrees and then murders the other golfer who witnessed the incident. Toronto takes Teddy to a technology convention where they will meet Mr. Green. He instructs Teddy on how to convincingly impersonate him so that they can find Green. Teddy is led into a room by one of Marin's men while Toronto instructs him through an earpiece. He has to interrogate for captive men to find out who is Mr. Green. He is given knives to torture them into talking, but he accidentally slashes one of the men's eye, causing it to bleed. At the first sight of the blood, Teddy starts to feel like puking. Despite Teddy's best efforts to control, he pukes on two of the men. He screwed up again. Feeling disgusted, 
one of them reveals that he is green. However, the main man notices Teddy's earpiece and prepares to kill him, forcing Toronto to intervene and kill the goons. On interrogation, Mr. Green reveals that his thumbprint is the second code to activate the bomb. Toronto tells Teddy to leave the room and then proceeds to cut Mr. Green's thumb and place it in a chip's bag. Meanwhile, the man from Miami reaches Puerto Rico and finds Toronto. As the two were about to leave, Miami attacks them and takes the thumb. He throws Teddy off the ledge, but he catches onto a decoration. Toronto and Miami fight as Teddy attempts to get himself down. Miami almost gets the thumb, but Teddy falls on top of him, and Toronto knocks him out. Toronto then contacts the handler for an update on the situation. After hearing the conversation, Teddy believes that the handler is lying to Toronto. Teddy and Toronto board a flight to Washington, D.C. During their flight, the duo forms a bond, and Toronto enlightens Teddy that he is a screw-up because of his fear of life and never doing what he says he is going to do. When they arrive, Teddy contacts Lori and apologizes for missing her birthday. They agree to meet at a posh restaurant, which the FBI learns about. Teddy brings Toronto along and starts to coach him on social skills. Lori, who also invited Annie, introduces the two. Toronto hits it off with Annie but they have to cut it short when Teddy spots Miami arriving at the restaurant. Miami confronts them in a closet and reveals that the handler hired him to eliminate Toronto saying he has gone Minnesota again. A fight ensues and Toronto is shot in the leg while Miami manages to secure the thumb and leave. The FBI arrives on the scene but the duo manages to escape. They steal a cop car to get to Miami because he and the handler are meeting with Marin. On the way to Marin's hotel room, Teddy asks Toronto about a job in Minnesota that keeps being brought up. Toronto explains that he was supposed to kill a man who owed gambling debts to the wrong people, but he stopped when he saw the man's kid. Toronto later regretted it because the man went on to commit a rampage. Once he gets his money, he wants to open his own restaurant and not kill anymore. The handler in Miami meet with Marin and Daniela at the hotel. Teddy and Toronto show up and Teddy claims that he is the real Toronto and Toronto is just his shadow man. Despite the handler's efforts to convince Marin that it is not him, Marin grows suspicious. Meanwhile, the FBI tracks the location of the stolen cop car and storms the place. Marin and Daniela get arrested but the handler and Miami manage to escape. Toronto escapes with the $2 million and the FBI rescues Teddy. Now Teddy rushes back home to try and find Lori, but she has already left the house after finding out that he got fired from the job. The handler contacts other assassins to go after Teddy and Toronto. The next day, Teddy learns Lori will be at the train station, so he runs there to try and catch her before she leaves. Miami finds Teddy and tries to kill him, but Toronto catches up and saves Teddy. They are then confronted by the man from Moscow, the man from Tokyo, and the men from Tacoma. The guys run into Teddy's old gym, and Toronto kills all the assassins. They are cornered by Miami outside, but Teddy finds the courage within him to knock Miami out. Before they could leave, the handler shows up demanding the money. After a brief chase, they end up at a factory. Toronto tells the handler that she can take the money, the money is in his car, but she must leave Teddy out of this. But the handler doesn't want to leave any witnesses. Teddy pulls a lever, hoping to open the door behind them but instead drops the hander into a boiling hot vat where she burns to death. He screwed up in a good way this time. Toronto allows Teddy to take his beloved car to catch up to Lori. Teddy arrives at the train station and apologizes to Lori for keeping things from her, and the two reconcile. Right when things seem to be okay, Toronto's car gets plowed by a train because Teddy left it on the tracks, scattering all the money. One year later, Teddy and Lori are expecting a baby. Toronto has opened his restaurant and is dating Annie. Teddy's no-contact boxing gym business has taken off and he even made Toronto his partner in the business. But Toronto still wants to kill Teddy for destroying his beloved car. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.